Hello and welcome to the video. This is my overview review of this thing here. This is the Beta FPV HX115LR. It's a little toothpick model and I got it in a while ago when I got in all of my Express LRS stuff or ELRS stuff in from Beta FPV but it's taken me this long to get it set up and to get it flying and actually form a strong opinion. Now, if you don't know what I'm banging on about when I'm talking about ELRS or Express LRS, I have this video that goes into quite a bit of detail, explains it for new pilots. But this is a little bit of an unusual model in one major respect. And that is the all-in-one flight controller that's buried away in here is a Beta FPV unit. It has the ESCs, it's the flight controller, but also, excitingly, it also has an ELRS receiver installed in it. So those little white antennas stuck out the front, they're the antennas for it, and it binds and connects to my ELRS uh, module from Beta FPV as well. Now, lots of people make um, ELRS technology. This just happens to be the first lot that I've got in. So I'll put time codes down below if you're interested, so you can go and have a look. Uh, usual stuff here. I'll unbox it, show you how it comes in the box. Uh, Beta flight setup, dump and diff are going to be below. Uh, there was a second set of PIDs sent to me, so uh, they make it fly a little bit better. And then also uh, talk a little bit about the flying footage and the summary at the end. Now, the two things that really interested me about this, one is the fact that it does have that ELRS built in, and I'm expecting that we're going to see more of that in the future in the hobby. And the second thing is the fact it's got those LR letters at the end, long range. Because with a 450 milliamp power 1S battery, that's not going to get you very far. Uh, flight time on this is about three minutes. However, when I was looking at it, it talked about the fact it can run from a single 18650, and that did catch my attention. Now, I have looked at a similar model to this that does run on a single 18650 battery. That's the Recon 3, uh, and that is an engineering uh, marvel, but actually not very fun to fly. There's lots of compromises to get down to run a single 18650. So let me talk a little bit more about that as we go through the video. So very quickly, let me show you the battery charger. This is the less sexy part of this setup. Uh, this is a new battery charger from Beta FPV designed for these batteries. Uh, six batteries can be charged at once and you have a little switch at the side that char changes it between 4.2 volts and the HV batteries, the 4.35 volts, which is what the setting needs to be for the batteries that you get with the kit. Talking of the kit, let's unbox that. So again, this is the Beta FPV HX115LR toothpick lightweight quad. Inside here is an F41S 12 amp all-in-one flight controller that includes an Express LRS 2.4 gig receiver. It comes with two 450 1S batteries, but it does, in the blurb on the website, talk about uh, using an 18650, which could give you up to 15 minutes of flight time. The VTX on this is up to 350 milliwatts, so that should easily be enough for park flying and actually probably more power than most of us can use legally anyway. Beware of the batteries, they are slightly different connectors, which is why I've had to get the new battery charger in here. They're using the Beta FPV BT 2.0 connector, and that can support 9 amps continuous and 15 amp bursts. So the wheelbase is 126 millimeters, weight's about 44 grams. The motors are 1102 18,000 kV motors. The propellers are HQ3020 two-bladed propellers with a 1.5 millimeter shaft. They're just push fit, there isn't any screws to hold them in place. Again, the flight controller is an F41S 12 amp all in one flight controller main board with the ELRS 2.4 receiver all installed. The camera at the front is a Cadix Ant camera, uh, which performs okay, but only okay. I'll show you that in a minute. And it reckons on the website flight time is three to five minutes with a 450 milliamp hour 1S battery and 15 plus minutes with a VTC6 3000 milliamp hour battery. So let me very quickly plug it into Betaflight and show you how this little fella set up. Uh, again, dump and diff are down below on the link if you want to go and have a look at that. I've also included a link down below to the updated PID settings that I'm actually flying with this. I didn't use this original set. So once I've connected, everything looks good. Let's enable expert mode. Move the quad, yeah, everything's good. So, 
uh, how it came, ports, only a couple of things set up. Uh, VTX Smart Audio is on soft serial 2 to control the VTX. UART 1 is for the serial receiver. Configuration, motor direction is reversed. Be aware of that for your props. D-Shot 600, 8K gyro, 4K PID loop frequency. Uh, CPU load isn't bad because it's an F4. CRSF, because this is Express LRS, that's all built into the board. And uh, nothing really else set up here. Oh, if you are flashing the receiver on this all-in-one board, top tip, disable telemetry here in beta flight before you do it, and it will work a lot better. Battery stuff looks like that. Failsafe is set to drop. That just should be. Pit tuning looks like this. However, as I said, beware of this. Just use the uh, updated PID settings that I'm flying on mine. I'll show you what that looks like in the flight footage in a minute. Mode setup is incredibly basic, so you might want to come in here and have a bit of a play. And the on-screen display is definitely going to need some stuff moving around as well, so you can see everything. In terms of flying, it behaves exactly as you want it to. Uh, plenty of power on the 1S LiPo battery. Uh, fast forward flight is only taking about a third throttle. Performance of the camera, that Caddx Ant is okay. I'm not a massive fan of the Ant, and there's also a little bit of breakup in the video. I can see where I'm going, but you know I'm not going to get the best analog experience uh, using this particular camera setup. The flying is smooth and easy with gentle flight characteristics. It is very well behaved and there is plenty of power if you want to blip the throttle to change direction quickly, although it's not really designed for out and out flippy floppy action. Sadly, with the supplied 450 milliamp hour 1S battery, flight time is only about three minutes. Uh, you can get a little bit more if you are super, super careful, but if you're flying in a spirited way, you really have to keep your eye on that voltage, that 450 milliamp hour battery depletes quite quickly. One thing I will mention though is this thing is incredibly quiet. Those two bladed props are very efficient, very smooth and produce very little noise. This is something that you could easily fly in a park environment away from people and not alert everyone that you're flying a little multi-rotor. So as toothpicks go, this isn't bad, but it isn't the best toothpick that I've had in. Uh, check out my sub 250 playlist for all the sub 250 lightweight quads like this that I've tested out. I would have really liked if they had committed to one battery system or the other. Uh, only three minutes out of this kind of battery um, isn't a massive surprise, but I would want more. I'd want kind of five or six minutes flight time out of something like this. But if they'd had fully committed to the 18650 and had the adapter in the box and a way to put it all together and a tune that would kind of be happy with that far greater weight in the model, uh, that would have been a little bit more interesting. The thing that's confused me the most about this is the fact that they've called this a long range model and then shipped it with these 450 milliamp hour batteries that you only get three minutes of flight time with. If it's got to be long range, then you need three or four things in my humble opinion. You need much longer flight times. Ideally you need a GPS for rescue mode and or distance direction to home indicators so you can at least find your way back if you happen to be out exploring in a new place. Uh, the 18650 battery would have made sense for that and some kind of lost model alarm would be nice. Uh, this thing in even short grass just disappears when it lands and if it lands at the other end of the field because you were pushing your battery to try and uh, fly for a long time then uh, you know, you're going to have to use some tricks, things like the RSSI trick, to try and find it. In summary, as a regular toothpick, this is okay. It's nothing particularly to write home about. However, the big thing that I am excited about is the fact that this thing is running off the Beta FPV all in one board. And maybe that's what this was. This was their first attempt at using that all-in-one flight controller in a toothpick configuration. But I think with those kind of single boards and very lightweight construction, Beta FPV could do some quite funky stuff and actually give us a true long-range quad. So I'm going to wait eagerly to see what they come up with next.
Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.